this on? Yes. Welcome to Old Town Methodist Church today. Glad to see you. My husband will be here later, probably. Don't know, but we're, uh, I'm filling in. Uh, so we have um, a beautiful day, beautiful weekend. I know those people that, that wanted to, to camp and have picnics to, you know, yesterday, they really enjoyed that. So um, let's see, announcements. We have the prayer vigil and the Bible study Saturdays at 11. And they, we have uh, prayer requests that you can put in the box. Uh, there's an informational meeting in regard to the change to the Global Methodist Church next Sunday after church. Because we've uh, had a few meetings with the man from Global. He's really nice. He's trying to find us a partner church. And we need to discuss that, some of the options that we have. So if you could come, that would be great. I mean, if that would be, if you could stay after church next Sunday, that'd be wonderful. Uh, the Administrative Council meeting Monday, June the 5th at 7, so probably we'll act on what we decided at the meeting after church Sunday. And then uh, uh, we have an anniversary celebration for Frank and Nancy Shepherd, 70th wedding anniversary, uh, Saturday, June the 10th at 1 p.m. And so let Beth Malone know if you plan to attend. Um, are there any other announcements? Okay, well, I have one. We have um, a new brochure for the children's time with Ann lessons, and we put some of them back there. The museum over in town, Children's Museum, has been letting us put them there, so we've tried to make them, and these are different. We're trying to start with, instead of putting the whole thing that we've done, we focused on just the teachings of Jesus in this one. We're going to do one with just the miracles of Jesus, and we're going to do different ones. So what I'd like for you to do is take one, try to take one, at least one Sunday a month and give it to somebody and tell them about it and ask them to listen to it and ask them to come to church, okay? That'd be great. All right, um, anything else? Okay, there any birthdays or anniversaries? All right. Lots of birthdays today. That's great. Um, Jamie put the whole thing up there. If you noticed, he put the dear loved ones. We had a discussion a couple of Sundays ago. It might have been last Sunday. I guess it was two Sundays ago where we discussed about whether we would say dear loved ones or God bless you. And so Jamie said that he got explained to him how why we said dear loved ones. So he couldn't find, you know, find one that just, so anyway, he put the whole thing up there so that we would know. So that's what we do say here at Old Town. Okay, oh, it's your anniversary, okay, all right. Well, so right now we're going to, uh, we have special music? Does anybody have special music? It's in the bulletin, I guess we're not gonna do that today. So we'll go ahead and move to hymn number 697, America.
Everybody hear me all right? We didn't check the mic, uh, but yeah, it's on. Go ahead. Did you forget? I don't know where my brain's been today. I forgot to mention our veterans. This is, this is Memorial Day, and we always have a picture of our veterans up here. And um, I would like to ask, is there anyone in here that's a veteran? Can you stand up and be recognized? We appreciate everything that you've done and sacrificed for us. Yes. They do. They yeah. Thank you. We are. We are blessed. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> you're running the show today. <laughs> It happens. I forgot it was Pentecost Sunday, so there you go. It happens. All right. Anybody have any Thanksgivings this this week? Um, the Lord answered my prayer fifty-fold within one week, and praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm thankful that Nancy's playing over Anybody else? I'm thankful she's back. You've been yes. to our fellow. Thank you, God. Thank you, I have a prayer request. My granddaughter's leaving tomorrow. We're going. I tell you. Just pray for her. Lord mercy. I'll be crazy. She's 19 and Family, she's going through a really hard time right now. Yeah. Uh, I remember Jamie. She's not feeling well this morning, so remember her. So she stayed home. Is there any more prayer requests? Houston. It's a long drive. Did you fly or drive? <laughs> it's a lot shorter. <laughs> Any more prayer requests? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for time to be in your house this morning. We thank you for the freedom that we have to just sit here and worship and not have to worry about the government running in and shutting us down, Father. We just thank you for the men and ladies that brought us that freedom. Today, we just want to bring our request before you this morning. You had several unspoken requests, Father. I don't know them, but the people that requested them know them. We thank you that you know our mind and our memory. Pray, Lord, for Jamie this morning. If she's not feeling well, just touch her body to help her feel better. And just thank you for all that you do and everything that you are. In Jesus' name, amen.
country we are. So we need to hold that, hold God close to it. Indeed, I forgot to mention that Greg Carter has a text from Carol yesterday afternoon. Greg is having severe pain in his abdomen. He continues to feel filled with fluid and have to have that removed. He's not doing very well, and he truly needs our prayers. Okay, now we're going to worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. Father, we just thank you for the jobs that we have and the money we receive. And as we give back to you, we pray, Lord, that you bless it and use it in this church and uh, further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, remain standing and turn to page 698 in your hymnal for God of the Ages.
You may be seated. Before we have our responsive reading, I want to say something. I love the words to that hymn, and I think that if everybody in our country would pray that, those words every day, then we might have a hope of making it, because if we don't turn back to the Lord, we're, we're done. So I will make a copy of that hymn for you, and I'm going to ask you to read those words, all four verses, every day. And, and pray those as you're doing it to the Lord. And at least our congregation will be praying that. Okay. And I'll turn the responsive reading over to you. Amen. Yes. We're getting ready to. <laughs> He's going to tell you about the day of Pentecost here. Okay. <laughs> it is the day of Pentecost, and we've been so busy at work because you guys keep buying stuff. So, we've had to ship a lot of stuff. So, we've been busy. But it is the day of Pentecost. I forgot all about it, so I had to text my pastor and say, Hey, is today the day of Pentecost? He said, Sure is. All right, I, all right, I forgot that it was today. So, we're going to, it's not really a responsive reading, but we're going to read it anyways. If you guys want to read along, he's got the words up there, I do believe, and it's found in Acts. Chapter 2, verse 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from the heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. This is probably the second greatest gift as a believer that we can get. The first one being Christ and His death and His resurrection. And then the next one would be the filling of the Holy Spirit. And without the filling of the Holy Spirit, there's no reason for us to be here today. Amen? Right. Amen. And so, it's a good Sunday, not only for Memorial Day, but for Pentecost Sunday. Amen. To go more on your persecuted church, and this has nothing to do with my message, but when you said this, and we don't really comprehend it as Americans, but we had a young man from China come stay with us for a school year. We were um, exchange student parents, I guess. What do you want to call them? Uh, they are told what to preach. They are told. And to memorize their scriptures because they don't have scriptures. A lot of them are passed. If, uh, as believers in Christ, you are thrown in jail. And to hold on to your scriptures, you are passed paper in the mouth through to this person so that you can see the scripture and that's how they learn their scriptures. A lot of them hide when they go to church underground and don't have the freedom as we have to worship Christ freely as we do here. So thank you once again to our servicemen and those that have died for that and there's been a lot of them. All right. Like I said last week, we are... If I can get my app to work. Maybe I should have wrote it down again. Maybe I just ain't meant to preach it. <laughs> like I said last week, my wife deleted it, so we redone it, and now it's being technically difficult. All right. I like that you said you're going to print this off so everybody can read that as a prayer. And this morning, we're going to talk about prayer. I do believe prayer is one of our biggest defenses. It's one of our biggest growing relationships with God is through prayer, not only reading. If I want to build a relationship, say, with my son or my wife or anyone in this congregation, I not only listen to your words, but I need to pray back or talk back to you to build that relationship. So prayer is a great relationship builder for your relationship with Christ. We're going to be in Nehemiah chapter 1 this morning. We're going to read the first, from verse 4 to 11. We have to understand what was going on here. And uh, the city of Jerusalem had just been burned, and they came to Nehemiah, and this is where we end up. You can also find the prayer layout. There's four steps to prayer. You can also find it. Do any of us know the Lord's Prayer? There you go. He lays it out for us as well, and also here in Nehemiah. 
You want to know how I love the Lord's Prayer? I played baseball. I grew up in Texas. I moved to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Anybody ever been to Pittsburgh? I've been to Pittsburgh. Pretty town. Uh, my baseball coach was a devout Catholic, and so after or before every game, we were to recite the Lord's Prayer before we prayed, which isn't a bad thing, but that's how I memorized it. But we come here in Nehemiah, and that's this, this is where we're going to start, and uh, my message was titled, But First Pray, so say that with me, But First Pray. There you go. Nehemiah chapter 1. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Then I said, Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to you. Hear the prayer. Your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sin. We Israelites, including myself and my father's family, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly toward you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws you gave your servant Moses. Remember the instructions you gave your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even in your exiled people are the furthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. They are your servants and your people, whom you redeem by your great strength and your mighty hand. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant and the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servants success. I need to get a drink. I don't know. For some reason, my mouth's really dry today. I don't know. All right, so you see the lay same layout there as the Lord's Prayer. Did you guys see it? It's the same layout. And we find this in the Old Testament. So my first question to you guys is, how do you approach prayer? How do we approach it? I learned that I, before... I study this, that I just approach prayer like going in and saying, hey, God, do this for me. But there's more there. What's that? Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Anybody else got anything? I like it when you guys talk back. That way I don't feel alone. I, I think we start off by saying we want, we want, we want, we got to stop ourselves because I think we should thank God first. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else? All right. All right. This is what I've learned. It's changed my life dramatic, dra dramatically, dramatically. There we go. I made up a word. My wife's got a calendar that she started for words our pastor makes up, and we're going to make a calendar for the year. So you guys can add that to your calendar. <laughs> but the first thing that we see Nehemiah do here is he adores who God is. So my first point this morning is adoration. Adoration. And you say, what is adoration? And like I said before, and some of you have said here, too much we rush into our prayer, God, do this. When, in, when someone is talking to you, do you like somebody saying, hey, you're a great person, I'm so proud of what you've done. Well, if we're created in God's image, he likes that too. And too often we forget who God is. We forget it because we get so busy. And like I said, I got so busy this week, I forgot that it was even Pentecost Sunday and I should have remembered that. But we forget who God is. And in Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, you find who God is. Does he have it up? Because I'm just going to read it from my thing. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. We forget that in the business of our life, and he wants to hear that. You see Nehemiah do that here in the first couple of verses of the scripture, saying who God is and what he's done, and who, how powerful he is. We forget how powerful he is. 
it's a sad thing because how do I say this? I forget who God is as well. So I'm not just grouping you guys in there because I forget that too. But we forget the power, like we read in the day of Pentecost, that came down on earth that was so full of fire that it caused men to hear the same tongues and understand the tongues. And you can also find when the temple of the Lord was built that the power of God was so strong that it came in like a rushing fire in the temple when it was opened in Solomon's days and that it came out on the street and knocked people over. That's the power of God. And we serve that same God that they serve then. And we forget that. The second thing that we see Nehemiah do in this passage of Scripture is he confesses. That's a hard thing to do because sometimes we don't recognize our sins. He confesses. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people who are called by not my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. So this is what Nehemiah is telling us. After the adoration of who God is, and we as Americans realize who God is, we confess what our land has become. And if you agree with me, our land has gotten kind of crazy right now. But what does God promise us in the scripture? If we confess to our sins, which we should do daily, and we confess the sins of our land, the United States of America, and if we confess the sins of Sciota County, guess what? The Lord is going to bless it. Because he tells us that. He's going to heal it. Pray for that healing. Do you believe God can heal Sciota County? Do you believe God can heal the United States of America? I believe that. I know that. He's done it before. Those of you that are older have lived through hard times. You see where this country has come. Me as a 40-year-old man, I haven't got to experience hard times yet. You know what I'm saying? haven't experienced that. According to my dad, we did because he was a missionary and we did have hard times, but I wouldn't have known because I was young. So if we confess those sins, he not only promises to heal our land, but he promises to heal our family. And we all have family members that need healed and we all have family members that need saved. So if we confess those sins before him, he will heal that. The third thing that we see Nehemiah do, and we get to what you said, Thanksgiving. Comes to Thanksgiving. Isaiah 43, 1, verse 2. But this is now, but now this is what the Lord says, he who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by you, by name. You are mine. When you pass through the rivers, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Thanksgiving. So you begin to see Nehemiah reminding God of the promises that he has made to the Israelite people. Well, those promises stand for us this morning as well because we are now part of the family. Don't forget that. Sometimes we forget that the promises God made to the Israelite people was also promised to us. And we forget that over time as we begin to get busy. Isn't it nice to know that he summoned Pat by your name? He summoned you. Each and every one of us sitting here, he summoned us. Think about that. As many people are on the earth, he summoned each and every one of us. One day he said, Heath, you're a crazy young man and you need to straighten up. I'm still honoring but I'm doing different now. I do have a thank 
that I need to give him. Uh, my wife has a friend that couldn't, she couldn't get pregnant. She got pregnant and then she lost one and then she got pregnant again and we begin to pray over her and just praying and covering her in prayer and I want to thank the Lord for answered prayer because she gave birth to a seven pound, eight ounce baby boy on Friday. Healthy, pretty little thing. But God answers prayer if we're faithful to him and we follow what he says and it's, I believe that God has big things for your guys' church. I believe that for hardly. I've been praying that over you guys. Amen. If you guys are faithful to him and you follow him and you pray to him and build that relationship with him, he's going to build your church. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. He's going to build it. I can say from the first Sunday I came here to the more Sunday now, I see different faces every time I walk in. So you guys are doing something good and God is answering your prayers. So be thankful for that. Be thankful for that. And what I'm going to try to help you do, if you guys want to, is get you some youth in here <laughs> one day. Yes. Just be praying for that. Yes. Finally, the fourth thing that we always start with when we come to the Lord in prayer is supplication. What is supplication? You say, that's where you say, hey God, will you do this for me? And you see Nehemiah at the end of the scripture say, hey God, be with me and protect me as I go and rebuild Jerusalem. The scripture for that is found in John chapter 14. It's a great scripture. I love it. Anytime Jesus says he's going to do something, I love it because he promised it. Does anybody know how many promises are in the book of the Bible? It's over 3,900 and something. The only one he hasn't fulfilled is his return. And I do believe that's coming soon. You old timers, you guys have probably heard that for a long time. Old time. So, but he is coming because he promises that. John 14, 13 through 14 says, I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Remember who God is because he's the Alpha and Omega. When you ask for anything in God's name, in Jesus' name, what does he tell us here in this scripture? And I believe it full heartedly. He will do it. Say he will do it. Louder. He will do it. You got to get that confidence. He will do it. God will do it. Because he is faithful. This is what I want to challenge you with you guys this week. I even slowed down. But my message got shorter for some reason. But it was a, that's a good message, and we need reminding of that. Because like I said, I forget. Sometimes I just rush into it and say, hey, God, somebody calls me and says, hey, will you pray for me? And I just rush in, and I don't admire God for who he is. And I just say, hey, can you heal this guy or pray for this guy? I'm praying for him. Just be with him. But if we really sit down and we begin to build that relationship, you begin to see the change in your life. You see it in yourselves. There's a change there. So not only when you're reading his words, but when you're replying back to his words, you begin to see that change and begin to see this work. And like I said, I see a work in your guys' church and I see a work in your guys' lives. And I hope that my preaching is helping you guys grow a little bit. I'm going to close with this scripture. Isaiah 41.10. It's a great passage of scripture and it says, So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will hold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. Think about that. Did any of the veterans here see battle? Any of them? Steve did.
Where was he? Korea. Korea. I couldn't imagine going into a situation like that. I couldn't imagine the fear that would come over me, the adrenaline, I would say, as you're getting ready to go into combat. But the Lord promises he, us here, as we go into combat, not only for ourselves, but our community that's around us, do not be scared or afraid to go into that combat because he is with us. Don't be scared when you get outside these walls. I understand this is a good security, but do not be scared when you go outside these walls of the confrontation out there because God promises right there that he holds us up with his righteous right hand. I can give you a story one time that we were in uh, Mexico. We traveled in there, we went over Laredo, over the bridge, and we were traveling down in to town. And I remember many of times that uh, getting pulled over by the military. And if you know anything about Mexico, there's a lot of cartel stuff that goes on down there, and they're involved with the military, so I remember that. But my father was never scared. The missionaries that were there were never scared because they knew God was protecting them. And if something did happen, they were going home for their service. I got a funny story for that <laughs> because I was, I'm not blonde haired now, but I was, when I was 10 years old, I was a blonde haired little boy and I always stayed with my friend that lived in Mexico. His family lived in Mexico. They crossed the bridge and he worked here in the States. And then my friend, we went to school together and uh, I was watching a show on Netflix that I probably shouldn't have been watching called Narcos. And it was about uh, the cartel down there and how it got all started and everything built up. And uh, it wasn't good. There's a lot of killings and a lot of border wars and everything. And I always remember that me and him would run around town and Nueva Laredo was the town that we would run around in. And his dad would always say, you watch him and don't let him get away from you. And now it all makes sense of why it happened because they would have took me. And I looked at my dad and I said, why in the world did you have us down there for that? And he said, because of the Lord called us there. I was like, well, right, but we made it, I guess. But there, we made it. So this is what I want to encourage you guys with this week. She's going to print them papers off for you, read them. If you took notes, remember these. If I, I can... Write them down and have her print those off. But admire who God is. Remember who God is. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's your Savior. He's your friend. We talked about that last week. Jesus Christ is one of my best friends. John 15, 13. What greater love than one that would lay down his life for a friend. Think about that. Not only our military, but Jesus. What was the other one? Adoration. Confession. Confess the sins. Confess the sins of your nation. Confess the sins of Scioto County. Confess your sins that you have committed this week. Supplicate, or what was it? Supplication? Supplication, or thanksgiving. Thank him for your answered prayers. You guys did that this morning. There was a bunch of answered prayers this morning. Give God a hand for that. Come on. Come on. Wake up. I know it's jury out. Thank him for that. Thank you for what he's doing in your life. Thank you for what he's doing in your church. And then bring your petitions before the throne. And it will change. And then don't be scared to go outside of here and say, hey, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. This is what he's done in my life. And I have much to be thankful for. And this is what he can do in your life if you allow him. Stand. And then we're going to sing. I'm going to pray over the message. So if you'll stand. What hymn are we singing, Jamie? You got it up there? Battle Hymn of the Republic. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the time to be in your house this morning. We thank you for 
those that have served and those that have went on. We thank you for the message, Lord, that you have given us this morning. And we pray, Lord, that we just apply it to our lives and remember who you are and what you've done. You haven't changed from Nehemiah's day to our current situation right now. Father, you haven't changed. We just thank you for the people that are here this morning. Be with the people that couldn't make it because they aren't feeling well. We know that you hear our requests and that you will answer those requests because you tell us that if I ask anything in Jesus' name, you will do it. We thank you for that promise, Father. Be with us as we leave this place and uh, just thank you for everything you do in Jesus' name. Amen.
thank you all for being here. It's been fun. Enjoyed the interaction. I enjoyed this presence this morning. Let's pray. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the time to be in your house and be with us as we leave your sanctuary this morning, Father. But you don't live here, Father. You live in us because of the Holy Spirit. So let us be that sanctuary you need us to be as we exit this place, Father, and be with us as we leave and go out in the community and show your love and your light.